all been bothered at some time by mosquitoes. Although everyone knows what they look like, many people don't realize that mosquitoes do a lot more than annoy us. They can also transmit many diseases such as West Nile virus, malaria, yellow fever, dengue, and encephalitis. The need for mosquito control is obvious, but before we try to control mosquitoes, we need to know more about them. Welcome to the Mad Lab. Here we're going to show you what we've been working on, because we need your help. The life cycle of a mosquito is similar to many insects. It only takes about six days during the summer to go from egg to adult, and there are four basic stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. The female mosquito lays her eggs on or near water. Some mosquitoes lay their eggs in rafts on the water. Others are laid singularly, and some are laid on moist soil or by artificial containers. The eggs must wait for rain or irrigation water to hatch. When the eggs hatch, an immature mosquito called a larva emerges. Although they live in water, they are air-breathing creatures. They get their air at the surface of the water through a tube at their tails. Here at the mouth are the hair-like brushes that are used to draw on food. Like all insects, mosquitoes must shed their skin in order to grow, since the skeleton is on the outside. Transition through the larval stages takes about four days during the summer months. At this point, the mosquito larva must change its shape to become an adult. The process is called metamorphosis. The result of this state is called the pupa. Although unable to eat at this stage, it continues to be very active for a day or two while it transforms itself into an adult. When the transformation is complete, the pupa case splits and the adult mosquito emerges atop the water. The mosquito is now ready to begin the life cycle again. His slightly smaller size and brushy antenna makes the male mosquito recognizable. He won't bite. His diet consists of plant juices. Only the female mosquito bites. She sucks blood through her specially adapted mouth parts and uses the blood to develop the nourishing eggs. Okay, we know the mosquitoes need water to hatch. Standing water in ditches, canals, dairy lagoons, sprinklers, and irrigation systems are all sources of water for mosquito breeding. In Merced County, irrigation for crops and duck clubs is the primary source of water for mosquitoes. It's where they breed. If we can control this, we can get rid of the larvae before they hatch. For that, we need to call a professional. A real professional. Let's see what the mosquito technicians are up to. Our job is to locate and spray water that might contain larvae. So we need to check all standing water, especially in areas like this, where the ground remains wet all the time. Some areas flood only after a rain or irrigation cycle. In either case, larvae may be found. Breeding areas are noted on maps in aerial photographs so they can be inspected on a routine basis. Once we find them, we spray oil or other larvicides to wipe them out. And in smaller areas, sometimes handheld sprayers are used. In some cases, larvae must be treated from the air. This is done with a single engine spray plane. Even with all of this equipment, larval control can never be 100% effective. We must understand where mosquitoes are breeding. That's the first step to controlling them. There are several ways to find out where the mosquito populations are the densest. Light traps and CO2 landing rates are some of the methods used. Light traps attract mosquitoes with a light bulb and a fan is used to suck the mosquitoes into the trap. 23 of these traps are positioned around Merced County and operate every night. After a week, the technicians remove the catch and bring it into the lab for identification. And we use a CDC trap. It uses carbon dioxide as well as light because some mosquitoes are only attracted by the carbon dioxide that people exhale. All of the insects collected by these methods are brought to a taxonomist. It's my job to identify and count all the different species of mosquitoes. This is important because they can require different methods of control. After the mosquitoes have been counted and identified, we give this info to the entomologist who then decides when and where to assign spray treatments. Ground treatments consist of truck-mounted spray units with ultra-low volume aerosol machines. 
they produce a mist that can hardly be seen. We usually do this before dawn or at dusk when mosquitoes are most active and easier to kill. Spraying adult mosquitoes by air is expensive and used only when the mosquitoes are numerous or there is a potential for a disease outbreak. Disease control and prevention are important mosquito control activities. One example of mosquito-borne disease is dog heartworm and its spreads from bitten and infected dogs to healthy dogs. Although it rarely affects humans, it can be fatal for dogs. The immature worms live in the blood. The adult worms are found in the heart and eventually cause its failure. In California, Aedes sorensis, the western treehole mosquito, is the primary vector of dog heartworm. Different species transmit different diseases. Another mosquito-borne disease is malaria, which is still the most important public health threat in underdeveloped countries. This mosquito, Anopheles freeborni, is capable of transmitting human malaria in the Central Valley of California. The most important mosquito-borne diseases in Merced County are West Nile virus, St. Louis, and Western equine encephalitis. West Nile virus, a form of encephalitis, is a viral disease of birds. These mosquitoes transmit the disease from bird to bird. When the virus builds to a high level in birds and mosquitoes, humans can also be affected. <laughs> Taking samples of bird blood to check for encephalitis antibodies is one way to predict an outbreak before it occurs. In Merced County, we use chickens to check for encephalitis. A drop of blood is collected on a strip of filter paper by pricking the comb of the chicken. The bleeding doesn't harm the chickens. If encephalitis antibodies are detected, then mosquito control efforts can be increased to minimize human infection. Dengue and yellow fever are two other mosquito-borne diseases. The Aedes albopictus, or Asian tiger mosquito, transmits these diseases from person to person. This mosquito species has a very short flight range and has adapted to live in urban areas. They breed mostly in artificial containers, such as tires, cans, and water-holding junk. Biological control is another method of limiting the mosquito population. For example, the cannibal mosquito, called tux or hinchites, or simply tox. These mosquitoes lay their eggs in the same containers as Aedes albopictus. Their larvae eat other mosquito larvae, the adult talks are harmless as their curved mouth parts cannot bite. Another biological control, small fish have always eaten mosquito larvae. Many mosquitoes have the potential to transmit disease to humans and animals. We do a lot, but all mosquito populations are difficult to control. So make sure you do your part to understand mosquitoes and take action. We need your cooperation to control mosquitoes. Be a mad labber! At the Merced County Mosquito Abatement District, we are doing our best to make the county a healthier and more enjoyable place to live. Thank you.